In this video, some important information on changeover with GA Slider. Changeover settings can sometimes be complicated. That's why we'll look at some basic information first, and then we'll look at how to set the configuration via Dongle and Hightune. The setup we will be discussing in this video is the following. A TA modulator with TA slider changeover connected to the actuator for the 6-way valve, a TA M106 changeover. With this setup we can have proportional control on the TA slider and the actuator for the 6-way valve will switch to the cooling or heating side. This will give us accurate control and a minimum of installation components. For this specific setup you will need a TA slider 160 changeover, also available in bus version with the prefabricated plugs to connect to the M106 changeover or a slider 160 plus where you will need to connect the wires. The settings of the DA slider are now really important to have good results. In this schema you see how the wiring is done. The TA slider 160 changeover is supplied with 24 volts AC and it should only be AC and receives a 0 to 10 volts input signal. This input signal, or the combination with the binary input, is then translated to the TA-M106 as a kind of three-point control by the setting of the relay. The changeover can be done by slit splitting the 0 to 10 volt input signal into two zones, one for cooling, one for heating, this is the dual range, or by using the binary input to change the position of the relay, thus the position of the TA-M106 and change the maximum flow. The XV terminal on this picture is the 0 to 10 volts output signal that can be set as desired. So, as already mentioned, with an analog control signal there are two ways to handle the changeover. Or we use the dual range and split the 0 to 10 volts in the cooling and the heating zone, or we use the binary input to switch. This will depend on how the controls contractor plans to configure this. And to be 100% accurate, I need to add here that the changeover signal could also be communicated by a bus signal. Of course, when using the bus slider versions. We will discuss this in a later video. Before starting the programming of the TA slider, we need to check two parameters. How is the 6-way valve connected, heating and cooling side? And when using dual range, how is the heating and cooling zone mapped by the controls contract? heating on the low zone of the 0 to 10, cooling high or the other way around. Here you see four options of setup. Each option will need a specific configuration. We will attach a file to this video explaining the different steps and configuration for each setup. In this video we will only use setup 1 as an example. So let's look at the configuration for dual range first. I will demonstrate this configuration by creating an offline configuration file in Hightune. So I will select a slider 160 changeover. Then we can start programming. The first step is to set the input signal to dual range. Simply by clicking on control type in the input signal menu, you will find three options. We select dual range. You see now that the in signal input is 0 to 3.3 volts and 6.7 to 10 volts. Of course, we can change this in other values. If needed, you can change or switch the heating and cooling mapping by clicking the orange button. The second step now is to properly set the correct valve in the valve selection menu. This will give us the opportunity to set the limited flows instead of stroke limitation in millimeter. I'm selecting a TA modulator 15 and as you have seen I have sent the flow data to the actuator which gives us more information. The third step now is to set the limited stroke. We will use an example of 400 liters for cooling and 200 liters for per hour for heating. So simply by shifting the stroke limitation button, clicking on stroke limitation, 
And then instead of limiting with stroke, I will limit with flow. So click the flow button and then we can change the flow values for cooling as we have set 400 liters. For cooling. Voila, done. And then we go to heating and we change this to 200 liters per hour. You also see there the minimum and maximum values. So these are the minimum and maximum values according to the TA modulator DN15 in this case. Then we go back to the stroke limitation and you see here that there is an option to set the minimum stroke. So if needed, you can also set the minimum stroke in flow or in stroke value in millimeters. After that, we can set the relay. So we shift the button to enable the relay and then you see the action will be normally closed and the trigger will be the input signal in this case. So we need to set the trigger to input signal smaller than a certain value. So there below smaller than and then the threshold we can change it for example to 5 volts which is a good value it's half of the full range 0 to 10. Voila, 5 volts, then we click on back. And once this is done, we can move to the final step. Save the changes when directly connected to an actuator or save the configuration. So here I will simply save the configuration file. Let's call it dual range changeover. And after saving this, I can find it in my HiTune app and uh, share it with others if needed. On dual range, change over, then save. And job is done. So let's look at the other option now, the change over via binary input. Again, I will demonstrate this by using the offline configuration. So I'm creating a TA slider configuration with the TA slider 160 changeover. We need to select this first, OK, then we can go back and start configuring. Let's look at the input signal first. You will see that it's set now 0 to 10 volts proportional. If needed, you can change this, but uh, for a dual range, that's not necessary. And then first step is to set the correct valve. So we click from IMI Hydronic and we select the modulator that we are connected to or that the slide is connected to and we send the flow data to actuator. Second step then is the binary input parameters. So let's click on binary input then we enable the binary input and you see that the trigger here is an open input line. We could change this to closed input line depending on how it is set uh, from the controls contractor. And then the action needs to be change limited stroke. We are programming in the orange. You see that the standard mode here is now set to cooling. If it's heating, then you can change this depending on how the six-way valve is uh, hydraulically connected. And then we can set the limited stroke. You see millimeters. If we click on flow again, as we have set the valve, we can set the limited flows in liters per hour, which makes it much easier to configure. So let's use 400 liters for cooling and 250 liters for heating. Voila, second step is done. Now we need to configure the relay. So we go back and click on relays. Then enable the relay and the action will be deactivated or normally closed, turning to normally closed direction when we have an open or a closed input, binary input, again depending on uh, how, the, how the configuration is done. So now we're selecting an open binary input as an example. And then the setting is done. You can have an overview of all settings via Generate PDF Report. If I click on Generate PDF Report, 
I will have a full overview of uh, all the parameters set. It's a bit easier than uh, the configuration file where you need to enter each tab separately. So here you see the configuration. We see we have the input signal proportional 0 to 10 volts. The binary input that is set to change the limited stroke and the limited strokes are there also. And you see the relay is set uh, with the open binary input as a trigger. And then if we go down a bit, we can see the flows that, that are set. You see here the 400 liters and the 250 liters. So it makes it easier to have an overview. But again, we will save this configuration. We will call it binary input changeover. Save and the configuration is done. In an upcoming video, we will perform a live simulation of changeover with dual range. This will give us insight on how TA slider is reacting to a change in input signal.